Due to its low air intakes, the Vought F-8 Crusader has been dubbed the Gator and the sports car of the Navy by Navy pilots. It is renowned for its supersonic speed and ability to take off safely even with its wings folded. The Crusader was the final gunfighter built to carry four 20mm autocannons and later was known as the MiG Master after shooting down 18 North Vietnamese MiG-17s during the Vietnam War. Though history is occasionally ignored, the aircraft is regarded as one of the most amazing of its period and was designed to demonstrate the dominance of American aviation. It was because of the Crusader's immense popularity that the proverb, when you're out of F-8s, you're out of fighters, originated. The U.S. Navy needed a fighter plane that could carry 20-millimeter autocannons after the Korean War. The Navy published specifications in 1952 for an airplane that could land at 100 miles per hour or less. John Russell Clark commanded the Vought that unveiled the V-383, which would go on to become the F-8 Crusader. The aircraft was the first fighter jet in the U.S. arsenal to ascend straight up and surpass 1,000 miles per hour thanks to its potent Pratt & Whitney. J-57 turbojet engine, which produced 18,000 pounds of force. Additionally, it had a variable incidence wing to enhance its angle of attack. The groundbreaking Vought F-81 was created to outperform rival aircraft designs, such as the Grumman F-11 Tiger and the McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II. On March 25, 1955, it made its maiden flight faster than the speed of sound. Thirty days later, the second prototype was ready. Records were broken by prototypes. In 1956, Navy test pilot R.W. Duke Windsor broke the all-time record. The airplane traveled 2,200 miles in three hours and 28 minutes in 1957. In the same year, Major John H. Glenn completed the first supersonic flight from California to New York. Additionally, Vought worked on the F-8 program's successor, the Crusader III, which was a rival to the McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II. When it made its first flight in 1958, the Crusader III featured an engine that was more powerful and performed exceptionally well. The U.S. Air Force and Navy received the Crusader in 1957, and the Swordsman Squadron was the first to take flight with the aircraft. Additionally, the F-8 was assigned to the California-based VF-154 Black Knight Squadron. The Crusader descended unusually quickly, defying expectations of a slower landing jet and necessitating a high level of expertise from the pilots to make a successful touchdown. Takeoff was difficult and quick because pilots had to control strong aircraft that could take off. The Crusader was a pilot favorite, although it had a higher accident rate due to frequent hydraulic fluid leaks and electrical system malfunctions. Climbing down the engine intake was a frightening experience for the deck crew, also known as the Gator, as the 1261 aircraft produced in 1106 were engaged in accidents. The workers were told not to go in front of the aircraft, and it was positioned low. John Borey, a jet mechanic, related an event in which he took hold of a pilot by the ankles when he was being sucked by the jet's intake. The aircraft was regarded as the Navy's sports car and was highly praised by pilots. According to General Jack Daly, director of the National Air and Space Museum, the aircraft was a hit with every pilot. The strong afterburner, with only two settings, on and off, produced a stunning and uncontrollably large thrust explosion which made engine runs enjoyable for mechanics. The Crusader, a U.S. Navy aircraft, was sent to the front lines of the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962. The F-8s flew twice daily from Key West, Florida, to Cuba and returned for film development as part of Operation Blue Moon. The U.S. verified the Soviet Union's immediate-range ballistic missiles on the island and recorded their evacuation using 160,000 photos. The U.S. Navy unit commendation was given to the unit. 
and the pilot was awarded a Distinguished Flying Cross. When U.S. combat forces were dispatched to Vietnam in March 1965, the Crusader quickly emerged as the primary aircraft, equipped with two guided AM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles and 32 unguided Mighty Mouse aerial rockets, the F-4 Phantom II was superior despite not carrying internal cannons. The Crusader was considered the pinnacle of air superiority fighters due to its speed, agility, and greater range. During the Vietnam War, the Crusader shot down 19 MiGs, earning the moniker MiGmaster. The aircraft was vital in the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps' efforts against communist troops in North and South Vietnam. The French Army ordered the F-8 aircraft in 1962 to be fitted with smaller carriers and equipped with two French Matra R-530 infrared missiles. The aircraft accompanied the Super Tonder fighter jet on combat sorties over Lebanon, the former Yugoslavia, and the Adriatic Sea. From 1977 to 1991, the Philippine Air Force used 35 F-8 aircraft for pilot training. The remaining planes were grounded in 1988, but 10 were kept in reserve. After being damaged by the 1991 eruption of Mount Pinatubo, the jets were formally decommissioned and sold for scrap. NASA installed a supercritical wing using a F-8A in the 1970s, but the move was deemed unfeasible due to increasing operating expenses. The final Crusader was transferred to the National Air and Space Museum in 1987, serving with operational light photographic squadrons for over 20 years. The F-4 Phantom, a more agile and powerful fighter, replaced the Crusader, which retired in 2016. The F-8 is considered the last gunfighter, with four 20mm auto guns as its main armament. To watch more videos on American bombers, click the link on the left. To watch more than two dozen videos on German aircrafts, click the link on the right. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.